boom. Hello. <laughs> you coming out? Come on then. Follow my finger. What's going on guys and welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, then I hope you enjoy the show and you stick around and have a really good day. If you are new here, then you probably haven't seen this tank behind me. I very recently set this up, so it's in my video list somewhere. But this is my better sorority tank. It's doing fantastically well. The fish have been in there now for about five days. Tank's been set up for about seven, eight days, something like that. But we're getting our first signs of problems. Now the girls are doing really, really well. There's been no fighting going on at all. And the reason I say that is because there's no fins that are torn at all. I've not seen them fighting. When I have been in the studio, I suppose they could have done it at the night. No, the problems that I'm talking about are new tank problems so basically die off some plants so some melting crypts for instance they they melt and then another problem we've got is that we're starting to get a bit of diatom algae and just a bit of fred algae generating on some of the rocks it's basically a lighting issue at the moment there's not enough established plants to fight the the, the nutrient levels and the algae's winning if you like there's enough nutrients there for the algae to grow now you can't be just good old-fashioned getting your hands in the tank and scrubbing stuff off i kind of like to use a toothbrush like a small toothbrush to get on things like rocks and then you can use your fingers and thumbs to do it to do it on the leaves as well now i want to get to that in a minute but first of all, I've got some inverts and fish that I can. I need to just get them temperature acclimated and get them in the tank first because they're in bags at the moment. I've just come back from the fish shop and then I want to get my hands in there. You could say that's a bit silly because you might disturb the fish and the inverts, but nah, they'll be absolutely fine. One of them will just go and hide straight away and the inverts, will. you won't even see them anyway. So yeah, like I say, just got back from the shop and I have got... Am I in here? Yeah, 10 Amano shrimp in this one. It's not going to focus on it because it's locked onto my face. But yeah, 10 Amano shrimp. And in this bag, I have got a bristle nose pleco, which is not actually a pleco, but it's, yeah, like more of a. I don't know, what are they? I think they're plecos. Hang on. Okay, so they're Ancestrus, which is a sort of genus of pleco, so they are a pleco. One of the oldest fish I've currently got, which is like probably two and a half years old now, is an Ancestrus pleco. It's, a, it's the albino one, so it's kind of gold. This is the darker one. They didn't have any gold ones, so I did want a gold one. Maybe I'll get another gold one as well. Anyway, that's not the point. I'll be able to show you guys that albino pleco in another video. That's coming up shortly. It's my home aquarium, you see, and it needs a massive revamp very soon. But enough of that. Let's get these guys in their tank acclimated. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna drip acclimate them. I don't wanna risk any losses with the Amano shrimp. The Pleco will be absolutely fine, but let's get some, the drip acclimation on those uh, Amanos. They're not the cheapest of things. To be honest, they might just be a <laughs> an expensive snack for these guys, but I don't think so because I asked them to get me some decent sized ones and I'm pretty sure they'll completely outsize these ones. I mean, they're only tiny little female betters these, so hopefully <laughs> they won't just eat them all. <laughs> but saying that, Amano shrimp are quite clever at being like, really elusive and they'll come out in the dark and who even knows hopefully this it's all all right i think it will be So the shrimp and the fish have now been acclimating for over half an hour. I'm going to leave the drip going for a minute. And whilst that's still going, we can take out the uh, pleco. I don't really like calling it that because it's a bristle nose. We'll call it the bristle nose. And it, I think it's a male, by the way. Uh, can I get a look in here? No, you're not going to be able to see. But I think I went in, in just a minute ago and just saw some little tufts coming up. It's only a little one. It'll get bigger than that. Not much bigger. It'll probably get about that sort of size. You only need one for a tank like this. You could probably have two, but one, one will be enough. Anyway, let me take him out and guess what this means. It means we get to use the awesome kettle again to hold down the, the net whilst I pour them in. Guess what? The other day I actually used it to make a hot drink, believe it or not. Okay, okay, okay. Let's put him in. Let's put him in. Right, will he swim out? Will he swim out? Or will I have to sort of tease him out? Come on, Bella. He's making his way forward. Yay, there we go. Okay, straight down. Whoa, he looks massive compared to those guys, didn't he? <laughs> Absolutely huge. And I've just spilt water all down the tank. Never mind. Oh, he looks so nice, didn't he? Really nice. Can you see any bristles on his nose? Just, just down the front there, look. 
at the bottom i think that's some bristles the, so basically the females don't get the bristles but maybe they do in that area i'm not entirely sure but i do know in the middle where those little sort of nostril looking bits are you get really big bristles coming out the top I'll, I'll put a picture up of what it looks like on uh, some mature ones i've not my one's a female that i've had for a long time so haven't got any bristles so it'd be cool if this one is a male and i can see that look at this look at this uh better having a look no 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 way too big way too big for me it's not gonna happen oh yum 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 Oh, they're little workers and i do love the shape of these fish as well i love the shape of big plecos like all the different colored ones like the zebra ones and that but they get absolutely huge and i just don't think these kind of tanks that i have are suitable for them maybe later on when i've got an even bigger studio that's on the ground floor and i can get big fit five and six foot tanks but yeah he's, he's gonna do a great job he's already getting to work you can see he's sucking on the glass straight away look at that sucker <laughs> Yeah, so there's loads of diatoms for him to munch on. So yeah, I think this is finished drip acclimating now. Yeah, look, we nearly filled the bag up. Anyway, let me stop that. Let me stop that drip. Uh, all you got to do is pull the water out, or pull the tube out of the water, sorry. Plonk that in. There we go, that'll be the drip ended. And now we can get the Amano shrimp in as well. Right, let's release the Amanos in. I've put them into this jug because I didn't like some of the stuff that was in the bag. Uh, that landed in the net, so I fished them out individually. So, here we go. If I go down low, because I don't want any of them getting eaten by the... Uh... Oh, that one's having a look. They're having a look. They're having a look. I suppose, thinking back, a good idea would have been to feed the fish first, but we seem to be all right. They don't seem to be attacking or doing anything bad. And the Manos will just get straight to work as well. They're really, really good for that. There we go. Look, look at this guy. Straight away. Good man, good man. Or, or, or woman, or woman. Although he's quite small, so he might actually be a male. Okay, and then livestock wise, last but not least, over here in this tank, which is the uh, sort of Brazilian style Emotetra one that I set up, it's doing really well, but there's there's about six or seven Otosynclus in there, which is just not required. They don't need that many. Three will be fine. So I can take three out and move them across into this tank where there's absolute ton of food for them. And then that's got, then we've got Amanos, we've got Bristlenose Pleco, and we've got Otosynclus. Like, they're, they're killer. They're going to do a really good job. One last thing that actually be really good is a Neurite snail as well. I might go and get one of those. Um, and then after that, we can just have a look at what we can do manually as well to help. Oh, yeah, guys, and another little point I want to make out. Some of you were worried about stress bars in the previous video. I mean, I'm struggling to catch this guy, but there you go. Look, you can see, looking good. No sort of stress bars. I mean, they come and go. Sometimes sometimes they do. I guess it's when there's been maybe an argument or something, but yeah. Yeah, look, look, there's that turquoise. You can see there, no sort of stress bars. The purple at the back now. So just a minute ago, it had really high stress bars, and now there's got basically none. So they come and go. There was also a mention of flow being too high. I mean, look, none of the plants are even moving, so... There's not high flow in this tank at all. Obviously, if a fish is to swim right in front of it, then yes, there will be flow, but there's plenty of places for them to go where there's basically no flow. Like there, for instance. I know this because down the bottom here, there's a lot of sort of waste collecting. So, and round the back, look, the plants aren't even moving. So flow's not an issue. Stress is not an issue. They're doing very, very well. I'm really pleased with it so far. So recently guys, I bought a fish that I'd never kept before. It was a feature fish for the Asian aquarium you can kind of see behind me. Guess what? They're all dead. No, they're not. No, I need to stop saying that, don't I? <laughs> Get it on, absolutely fantastic. And here's the male look coming up to see us. Hello, buddy. He's not shy at all anymore. Colors look, insane colors. He actually comes to see me because he, he knows I'm the feeder now, which is also a sign of fish love. And they're not just interested in food, they love us as well, of course they do. Look, there's a female down there. Females actually co coloured up really, really well as, as well. Um, they're just not as large as the male, but they will apparently get bigger than the male. Oh, you can just see that little Siamese algae doing his job in the, uh, the grass. Should we call it the grass at the bottom? I mean, it's not grass, is it? It's pearl weed, but it looks really good. That big, big trim back I did before is working an absolute treat. Clam update, everyone. The clam is laid down. Um, I was slightly worried. Oh, look, there's a coolie loach right next to it going underneath. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, he's been closed for half a day now, but he was open on this side. And I could see him sort of only a little bit, but he was open. He's happy. He's just chilling there. He or she, he, she. 
hermaphrodite, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Tang's looking awesome though, isn't it guys? I like to keep it really bushy back in this area here, like a real sort of wild area, and then come to the open space at front. So the fish have kind of got two areas they can go in if they like. I think that's the best way to do it really. But more often than not, you can see the harlequins, they're, they're all in this open area all the time. Oh, look at that, through there. Timmy, let's go take a look. So Timmy's been in here for quite a few days now. Oh, he was just climbing. I oh, disturbed him. Sorry, it'd be good if I could have shown you guys, but there he is at the side there, look. Can you see him? Not very well, but there he is. Hello, buddy. <laughs> He's destroying all the plants. That's absolutely fine. Well, they're, they're brand new plants, actually. And I think they've been grown out of water because I'm getting an absolute ton of melt back, but that's, that's just... That's what happens. I'm gonna just keep replanting it. Whatever stays, stays. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. But as usual, the pearl weed is killing it. <laughs> you just can't go wrong with pearl weed. Look at him, look, hello. You think I can't see you? I can see you. Ready, uh, boo. <laughs> uh, boo. Hello, <laughs> you coming out? Come on then, follow my finger. Come on, you've already been fed, so I'm not feeding you again. He wants more food? Um, has he eaten all the food? He did eat all the food. Well, he is getting a big boy now. Okay, so here he is up against my thumb. He's still the size of my thumb. <laughs> You're such a tiddler. Say hello. Everyone loves you, by the way, Timmy. I'm gonna go up and swim. He's so nice. I think you're right. Maybe I do get him a friend. I mean, there's plenty of room in this tank. And to be honest, the tank I've got in, in mind for him next will blow this out of the water. I've got something so cool in mind. Really naturalistic, massive sort of swamp for like turtles. Oh, that, that, I'm, a, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready to do it yet. But at some point that will be happening. I kind of wanted to just use this one as a grow out tank so I can sort of feed him lots and keep, keep monitoring him until he gets a bit bigger. But it's not gonna do forever, especially if we get more. And I'm really loving the turtle. I mean, remember I said to you guys I was interested in getting reptiles, well, I'm not, I just, I was kind of forcing it. Um, I thought I wanted it, but I didn't, otherwise I would have done it. But turtles, another story. I absolutely love turtles, which are reptiles, let's be honest. Aquatic reptiles, but reptiles nonetheless. So, I think I should get some fish for him though. Like if I get some bigger ones, like white clouds or something like that, he'll probably be interested in them, but there's no way he'll be able to catch them. He's so slow and dopey. What do you reckon? Get some fish for his tank? So that is it for this one, guys. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you on the next one.